Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. I know that I'm innocent. God knows I'm innocent. Travis knows I'm innocent. I absolutely did not kill Travis Alexander. I had nothing to do with his murder. I didn't harm him in any way. Hello guys, it's Yana, and today we'll be discussing Jody Arias and the murder of Travis Alexander. To fully understand what led to the murder of Travis Alexander, it's important that we talk about the childhood of Jody Ann Arias. Jody Ann Arias was born on July 9th, 1980 in Salinas, California. She was born to her parents, William and Sandra Arias. Now to anyone who ever asked Jody, she would have told them that she had almost an ideal childhood. According to her, it was all sunshine and rainbows. She later tried to turn this story around in court in an attempt to gain sympathy but before shit really hit the fan for Jody she claimed to have an ideal childhood despite Jody's quote-unquote perfect and ideal childhood there was an incident in middle school where her parents actually went through her stuff and found that she was growing illegal substances she was just a kid and she was already getting involved in some very serious stuff Jody had felt that by doing this her parents violated her privacy this broke her trust for them forever to be to be fair though, you're a middle schooler getting involved in some pretty sketchy stuff. To me, it does seem that her parents try their very best to raise her well, but somewhere along the lines, things did go wrong. Jody was described by her parents as very, very intelligent, but very strange. Now, Jody's father did believe that she could have possibly had bipolar disorder because she would have these violent outbursts that were mainly directed towards her mother. I do highly doubt that they thought it was a point of concern at such a young age. She was sassy and she had behavioral issues, but she was also a young girl. A close high school friend of Jody's named Tina Ross said that Jody was a quote unquote good girl. However, Jody did decide to drop out of high school in her junior year. And not only that, but she moved out of her parents' house and moved in with a new boyfriend. Now, from this point on, all the way through her early 20s, she focused on photography, loved taking photos, and she also did a lot of waitressing jobs along the West Coast until she met a man named Travis Alexander. Jody Arias and Travis. Travis Alexander met in Las Vegas in 2006 while Travis Alexander was living in Mesa, Arizona and she was living in Palm Desert. Despite of the fact that they had met so quickly and lived such a far distance from one another, Jody and Travis really bonded at this business convention. They chatted for a while and Travis even went on to tell his friends that he felt a real connection to Jody. She knew how to pull Travis in, she captivated him, she was beautiful. She really did seem like the perfect girl for Travis. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, after this business convention, they did have to go back to their own lives. Travis went back to Mesa, Jody went back to Palm Desert, but this did not stop their connection from developing. Guys, Jody and Travis entered very quickly in a long distance relationship. They were very captivated by one another. They were also very in love, but there was one issue. Travis Alexander was a devoted Mormon and Jody Arias was not. Now remember how I told you that Jody had a boyfriend? Turns out Jody kept this boyfriend friend around. Jody really wanted to have a family. She wanted to have kids and a marriage and the man she was with at the time had made it very clear to her that he was not interested in marriage due to a divorce that he had previously went through. Now in Jody's head she's thinking I have this boyfriend who doesn't want a marriage and then I have this Travis Alexander guy who is a devoted Mormon who is a successful businessman who actually wants children and wants a family. So Jody quickly decides she's gonna dump her current boyfriend and really start to pursue this thing with Travis. Now in order for Jody to actually be with Travis Alexander, she had to fully convert to Mormonism. Travis gifted Jody the Book of Mormon and encouraged her to educate herself and told her that he would love for her to convert. Thus, on November 26th, Travis baptized Jody and she became a Mormon. Now around the time that Jody left her home, her parents also noticed that she had progressively become mentally unstable. There were actually a few incidences where Jody's friends would call her mom and tell her that she she needed to help Jody. Now her friends never got into detail, but they did tell her mother that she would freak out all the time. They didn't really understand what was going on, but Jody was losing it. Obviously, as their long distance relationship progressed, Jody would make her way to Arizona quite often to spend time with Travis, which in turn also meant that she would spend time with his friends, who very quickly realized that something was off about her. Eventually, Travis's friends had to sit him down and tell him that they did not like Jody's behavior. Over the course of their relationship,
relationship, Jodi had become progressively more and more controlling towards Travis. She always insisted that Travis tell her exactly where he is, who he is with. She very rarely allowed Travis to do things on his own without her. She would go through Travis's messages and she even hacked his MySpace account. So this girl was absolutely crazy. This toxic and controlling behavior really stood out to Travis's friends and they had to tell him. They were like, listen man, this girl is not good for you. She's very controlling, she is very toxic and you need to get her the hell out of your life. Travis's friend Hughes said that he started seeing things that were extremely disturbing about Jody, and he was worried that he was gonna find Travis one day chopped up in his freezer. So as you can tell, this isn't some small concern. His friends are really worried for him. By the time that Travis's friends told him this, he actually started to notice this behavior himself. It had gotten to the point where he was no longer able to go to the bathroom by himself because Jody would stand outside of the bathroom listening in. Is this girl not an absolute lunatic or what? Now because obviously he was aware that this was not right, he thought about it and he thought it would be best if he broke up with Jody. But because of Jody's very toxic, scary behavior, he thought it would be best to wait for Jody to go back home to Palm Desert so that she would be very far away from him when he actually broke up with her. This guy was genuinely concerned at this point and he just wanted this girl out of his life. So because of all this, in the summer of 2007, Jody and Travis did end up breaking up. Travis very quickly moved on and started mingling with other women, which Jody very quickly got word of and did not like. Now when Jody noticed that Travis was talking to all these girls, she was upset. She was upset that she wasn't getting Travis's attention anymore, so she quickly needed to think of a plan to get his attention. In order to get Travis's attention, Jody told Travis that she was being stalked by a man. Now this man was supposedly a secret admirer of Jody's, and he was begging her to be with him. Now Jody thought that this was the perfect story to tell Travis because she thought Travis would get very jealous that someone else is trying to take Jody. Although a part of Travis did feel like she was doing this for attention, he was still quite concerned for her because she was saying that a man was stalking her. So one day when Travis was hanging out with his friends, he decided to let them know that she was being stalked. He told them that he was genuinely concerned for her and his friends immediately told him hell to the no. They told Travis not to fall for Jody's trap and that she was just trying to get his attention. These occurrences would happen so often to the point where Travis could not do anything without Jody getting involved in his life. Any girl he would speak to, she would try to ruin the relationship. She would even break into Travis's house to watch him with other girls. Now after a while of this happening, somehow they got into a very big fight over email. A lot of the contents in these emails are unknown, but what I was able to find is that Travis was very mad at Jody. Apparently Jody had lied to something about Travis and it was his last straw. This time Travis was 100% done with Jody. So Travis moves on with his life and he actually plans to go on a business trip to Cancun with his company on July 10th. Travis's company actually allowed him to bring a plus one to this trip and Jody was convinced that she was gonna be the girl that he was gonna invite. I don't know why she thought this because he was 100% done with her and pretty much really did not want anything to do with her at this point but somehow Jody found out that she wasn't invited and that some other girl was invited instead of her. Travis had actually invited another woman by the name of Mimi Hall to accompany him on this trip. Now Mimi Hall was a good Mormon girl that Travis actually had romantic feelings for in the past and now that he was single he wanted to pursue her. But when Jody found out she was furious. On June 4th 2008, six days before he was set to leave to Cancun, Jody ended up showing unannounced to his house. Jody and Travis ended up hooking up that night and even taking a couple of explicit photos on Travis's camera. Now around 5 a.m. after their night of fun, Travis wanted to get into the shower. As Travis stood in the shower, Jody proceeded to take multiple photos of Travis. Then very suddenly, Jody stabbed Travis 27 times. After she had stabbed him, Jody decided that it was not enough. She she still had more rage and anger to get out and she decided to slit Travis's throat. What makes this woman an absolute monster is that even this was not enough for her. So she picked up a gun and shot Travis in the face. It's very obvious that Jody was really making sure Travis did not make it out of this alive.
lie. While Jodi was rushing trying to clean up this crime scene, she accidentally took two photos that were later used against her in court. After this, Jodi left his body in the apartment and left. In order to create somewhat of an alibi for herself, she called Travis after the murder took place and left a voicemail for him. I guess she did this to make it seem like, oh, she couldn't have done it because she thought he was alive. Now, Jodi was very quickly apprehended and initially denied having anything to do with the crime. She flat out said she had nothing to do with it. After hours of very long interrogation, she did admit to murdering Travis, but she said that it was self-defense. She claimed that Travis had attacked her, which was completely inconsistent with the crime scene. There was absolutely no evidence that Travis attacked her. Jody caught this man off guard and took his life mercilessly. Prosecutors said that this was very clearly premeditated murder. Jody entered into a jealous rage and she took it out on Travis. Jody's murder trial began in January of 2013. It lasted for five months and for 18 days out of those five months, Jody attempted to convince the jurors that she came from an extremely abusive childhood. She argued that she had a history of cheating boyfriends, dead end jobs, and even a twisted sexual relationship with Travis Alexander. Jody even tried to argue that Travis was physically abusive towards her. Jody basically tried to play every single possible card to get out of this crime. At the end of the deliberation, the jury found Jody Arias guilty of first degree murder of Travis Alexander and sentenced her to life in prison without the possibility of parole. She is now doing her time in Perryville Prison, Arizona, where she will spend the rest of her life. After being given her sentence, when asked if she would have preferred the death penalty, Jody said that she believed death was freedom. And honestly, I think the death sentence would be too kind for Jody Arias. She deserves to rot in prison for the rest of her life for what she did and for the way that she tried to manipulate everyone out of believing that she did it. Jody Arias was a monster who took the life of an innocent man out of jealousy and anger. I love you guys so much. Please stay safe out there and I'll see you guys in the next video when we discuss the next monster. I love you. Bye.